that are going to either help you achieve everything that you want or they will completely stop you from achieving everything you want. Now, very simple questions I love to ask, and I think they're kind of dumb questions. You know why I think they're dumb questions? I know exactly how you're going to answer it. Guaranteed. And if you don't answer it the way I know you're going to answer it, you're just trying to be a smart aleck and just go home and watch TV or something. Or that's some good habits. So you ready? Ready. Do you guys want to be successful or unsuccessful? Successful. How did I know you were going to answer it that way? That's what kind of makes it a dumb question, you know, in, in that way. Okay? Would you like to have energy, feel amazing, have incredible confidence, or not? Yes. yes. I could do this kind of stuff for hours, and I know exactly how you're going to answer it. Okay? So this is why we ask people, if I know exactly what you want, and you know exactly what you want, what in the Sam Hill is constantly keeping us from getting it? Do you have any idea? Ourselves. Absolutely, well, of course. <laughs> Do we have any other answer than that? Because that's a good answer. Lack of knowledge. Could be. Right? This is a question we constantly ask ourselves, and this bronze lady out here is going to freak me out. <laughs> three or four times I'm going, what is she doing? Is she going to come in? Is that her dog? What's going on? Jeez, ever since I drove up here. Oh, the punk's lady. Has it gotten you too? Yes. My yeah. goodness. And on occasion, I'll go, did she move? <laughs> Five minutes ago, I think she was. Oh. All right. So guys, what I really identify, what I want to look into is this. I honestly believe people know what they need to do. They know what they want, and they desperately want it. I don't believe there's any person out there, if I ask those questions, or I ask 100 questions, like I just asked, that I don't know exactly how they're going to answer. Would you agree? Yes. So the real question is, what is keeping us from constantly making the great decisions we need to make to get what we want, and are you ready for this, that I honestly believe you know how to get? Okay? Here's how I know this. If I talk to someone that smokes one, two packs a day, you know what I find the most knowledgeable people about smoking, the most knowledgeable people about smoking are, and how it harms your body? People that smoke, they really know. Exactly. They know it's detrimental. If I have a 600 pound guy, they know how detrimental constantly shoveling that food and not moving is. They know. Right? And they desperately want to change. The question is, what is keeping us from making the decisions? Addiction and discipline. Could be. Who knows? Motivation. We're going to talk about that today. But the biggest thing is, if I put an apple on a Sunday in front of a 500 pound man, they can tell me every time what's going to help them more. What makes them choose the Sunday every time, even though the apple is going to help them more. This is what we get into. So we're going to talk about this aggressively. Now, what I'm going to talk about tonight is it's not to make you feel, um, how can I put this? It's not to create guilt. It's not to beat you down. It's not to say, you know better and shame on you, blah, 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 blah. That's not what this is about. Right? It's not so we can judge others. I find that's one of the biggest detriments a lot of us have. We judge others. Instead, it's so we can look at ourselves and constantly ask ourselves, what can I do to change the situation? Right? Now, what I'm going to show you and teach you tonight is going to be very difficult. But whoever said changing was going to be easy? You know what's easy? Nothing. Who said that? That's the absolute nothing is easy. You leave a garden untended, you leave it alone, what happens to it? It gets overrun by weeds. You leave a car sitting in your front lawn for a year, what happens? It's rust and, you know, turns to destruction. Okay, negative happens, just, just happens. It's pretty cool. Positive takes a lot of work. How, how much hard work does it take to really make a garden truly flourish? It's a lot of work. Guys, it's how it is. I know it's unfair. I agree. But it is what it is. Let's get into this a little bit. Alright? Our objective today is I want to talk about accountability. Now our objective is I want to powerly impact our ability to achieve our results through individual yourselves and through individual also the organization's accountability. And this applies to your boot camp group, this applies to where you work, this applies to your family unit, this applies to everything. And it's going to always start with you. I have a boot camper ask me, do I always have to be the strong one? Do I always have to be the one that takes the higher ground? And I go, you ready? Yes! Every time. Why can't someone else do it? Because no one else will. 
Yes, it must always be you. Dang it. This is our objective. This is what we're going for. Are those batteries going to work? It does. So the first thing we want to do with accountability is let's get a basic definition of accountability. If I ask any of you what is accountability, what would you say? Responsibility. What else? If someone wanted me to hold them accountable, what are they asking of me? Make sure they're going to do what they said they do. Absolutely. Make sure they follow through. I ask many people, I need you to hold me accountable and make sure I do these things. That was actually a very good definition. All right, so I brought up Webster's Dictionary. This is the textbook. This is what people think of accountability. Now, what I'm hoping to do today is change our definition and actually reject this definition. But right now, let's kind of think of how we think of accountability. We look at accountability of having to report, to explain, to justify, to being answerable and being responsible. Now, I'll tell you right now, I cannot think of anything more miserable than this right here. Right? Any of you here work in uh, any type of organization or a company? Let me tell you when I worked within corporate fitness. You want to talk about miserable? Right, Rich? Yes. Working within corporate fitness. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, working within fitness, I honestly believe the main thing you always have to focus on is how can I help you? What's the first thing I'm going to like about you? What am I going to do to really change someone's life? That has to be the first thought at always. And guess what? I believe money happens after that. Always. However, when I absolutely know that I'm going to sit down, let's say I'm going to sit down with you and I'm going to do a consultation. But now, I'm sitting down with you to try to find out a way to change your life. However, I got a supervisor, I support to their supervisor, who then I support to their supervisor. I have to report to them that if I didn't sell you training, then I have to tell them why it didn't happen, what I could have done better to sell you training. Whether I thought that was the best thing for you at that time or not. Right? Now, knowing that I, if it doesn't happen, if I don't sell training because we have a goal to hit, and we have this to sell, and we have this to do, Understanding that that's what I have to go answer to before I meet with you, what does that do to what I'm trying, I mean, what does that do to my relationship with you and what I'm trying to accomplish? What do you think? Yeah, I am. If understanding, I'm coming here and I'm supposed to be there to truly help you and empower you. Makes you not care about them as much? I believe it's completely tainted what it should be. Absolutely. Because right there, I believe that's what's miserable about most companies. That's what's miserable about corporate fitness. Okay, our mind's not in the right place. Okay. So remember this because this is where a lot of people think of accountability. Okay. I hope that we're going to reject this by the end of the seminar. I hope I'm going to empower you guys to think of accountability just a little bit differently. To do that, we have to dissect accountability. There are four parts we're going to look at. We have an attitude about accountability. We're going to dissect the booties out of that. We got a process of accountability, we have true ownership of accountability, and we have got a different perspective on accountability. Here we go. If there was anything you could do today that could create a difference in your life, I would take this, I would type it out big and bold, and I would put it in as many places as possible. So when, not if, when inevitable circumstances come into your life, you have the attitude of this. Because you're going to start learning what we have learned and what we've been taught to do when inevitable. So what I'm saying is something, and I don't know what, you're all different people. Something is going to attempt to get in the way of you accomplishing everything you want. And I don't know what it is. I love when people says, okay, well, I'll definitely do boot camp or I'll do this or I'll do this. I'll be really ready. But first, I just got to get this out of the way. It's just so traumatizing and so hard and I'm so stressed. But when that's done, then I'm ready. And my question is always, well, then what about when the next thing comes up? Well, there's really nothing else after that. I'm really ready at that time. Something will always, and I don't know what it is. You guys know I'm right because it's happened over and over again. Something always comes up. Circumstances, inevitable circumstances always happen. So the very first thing I want us to adopt is this. Now, by the way, this is hard. This is hard because then we're not allowed to blame circumstances for the reason why we didn't accomplish something. So if we truly manipulate our attitude, to what else can I do to rise above my circumstances? 
and achieve what I desire. And that's the attitude we have consistently because when you keep on adding that, your brain can't help but start thinking of different ways that you're going to overcome that circumstance. And then you no longer become a victim of circumstance. You become people always looking for a solution. Now, I'll tell you what. When people come to me with that attitude, there, there are two words I really don't like because I think it's what high school girlfriends and the college girlfriends, it's, it's the eternity words of you always and you never. It's very hard to win those arguments. You never and then you always and just, ugh. However, I'm going to use one right now. Whenever someone comes to me with this attitude, I can always find a way to help them. I find it extremely difficult when someone comes to me with the attitude of, well, I really like this, 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 but all my circumstances and this is why I can't do it. That's very hard to overcome. It's like I'm trying to convince them to be successful. So the very first step to truly being successful is changing your attitude about accountability. Our attitude is what else can I do to rise above my circumstances and achieve the results I desire. If you have that always somewhere that you can see it, when inevitable circumstances come into your life, guess what? That's the attitude you'll have. You go, okay. How many of you guys have met Victor? Have you all met Victor? It's kind of fun when he kind of comes in there, well, here's the situation. What do you think? I go, well, I guess we better find a way to get uh, that taken care of. All right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sucks, though. We got situations coming up daily. Well, that really sucks. You know what I really like to do? I like to stomp my feet and belly ache and really have a hard time with this whole situation. But instead, we really have no time for that. We have to think this way. Or else, guess what? Nothing happens. But I'm very for compelling reason why it didn't happen. You know what the real issue is? Even though I have a very compelling reason why things won't be happening, what's the real issue? It's right there in front of you. Things aren't happening. We're not making forward process. I don't care if I have a compelling reason. I don't care if it's, I don't care if everyone's gonna really understand. If I have the best excuse in the world, well, it doesn't matter, it's not happening. All right? True ownership of your accountability, that requires a level of ownership that, what the heck? There we go. True ownership of your accountability means you make, you keep, and you proactively answer for your personal commitments. Now, what does this mean? Most people, they're very reactive. If things aren't going absolutely perfect, they start telling themselves stories, and then they react to a situation, or they react to an emotion they think they're feeling based upon a story that they're creating in their head. Usually when they're stories, it's not really based upon facts, it's based upon emotion. Because I gotta tell you right now, Rich just gave me a look I thought was very disrespectful. I'm very upset with Rich. I could be very, I don't know. And I just can't wait till after this time I have a serious talk with Rich. And it's just brewing in my head. And Rich just, I don't know, he had an itch on his eye. You know, he had a sneeze. That's all he did. He's going, what? Not really based upon facts, but boy! Making, keeping, and proactively answering for personal commitments. Now, this, and by the way, you'll never see me. I'm not going to shine this in your eyes, but I love this feature right there. <laughs> that is the geek in me. So you see me doing that a lot. This is the personal thing I love to talk about most. Truly accepting responsibility for the final outcome of a situation, regardless of the circumstances. Please write this down. This is what I mean by this. I don't mean this. I don't mean, I know I failed, and I know I, I know it could have gotten done. However, and I know I was 100% capable of getting it done. However, I take full responsibility for not doing it. Anybody here own a business? Okay, employees? Anybody have kids? We'll throw that out there. Let's say they were supposed to clean their room. And they were perfectly capable of cleaning the room. They've been home all day. Right? You come home, the room's not clean. Except they take full responsibility for not doing it. It was their fault. How do you feel about that? What's the real issue? It's still dirty. Why when we become adults does that all of a sudden become acceptable to have that excuse? But it was really my fault. Don't blame Rich. It wasn't really his. It was me. I go, I know it was you. I don't care. It didn't get done. Come on. Ah. Oh, jeez. Well, it didn't get done, but I have a very good reason. You'll hear me talk about my kids a lot. 
Because the only thing that really separates us from our children sometimes is now we're adults and we can throw a bigger, better hissy fit and hire a lawyer, I guess. As kids, you can still sit them at the table and make them grouse about eating the Brussels sprouts. Here, we can really throw a good fit now. All right. So, when you truly take ownership of a situation, see, here's the terrible thing about me, and I hope you become this way too, when you truly understand how phenomenal people are and how phenomenal they can be, is you no longer accept anything from the best from them. Because you know they're phenomenal. And you're going to constantly ask them to be phenomenal. And when they ask, act anything less than their very best, that's not acceptable to you. And you would certainly hope they would do the best of that for you. Okay? And when they ask the best of you, and you huff and puff and say how rude that was of them, I want you to embrace that of them. And say, thanks, I agree. I could have gotten it done, I should have gotten it done, I'm gonna go get it done. And me taking responsibility for it doesn't mean anything. I'm gonna go get it done, okay? So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about that. <coughs> perspective. When you look at perspective of accountability, you wanna embrace both current and future efforts, but I wanna re reject the historical explanations. What's a historical explanation of accountability? Webster's Dictionary. Having to report, having to justify. Well, here's what I did. Here's what I did it. You know, I really feel it's a good idea. What do you think? Oh, ridiculous. Good heavens. How about this? It got done. It's phenomenal. Did you break God's laws or man's laws? That's really kind of my question. All right. So what we really want to do is one thing that's going to really help you truly start getting your mind into a place where you can actually achieve everything you want to achieve is being able to recognize when, let me say it again, when, not if, when you start behaving in a way that's taking you away from what you want, that's taking you away from being successful. Okay, so let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Now remember, this is not so you can judge someone else. I find one of the worst things in the world is when you are judging someone else because don't we have a lot more stuff we need to worry about about ourselves? That's a classic technique of worrying so much about someone else to where we need to be from a position of strength first. You know, I just love, it's like a guy living in a cardboard box telling everyone else how to make money and you know, talking about the economy. I go, let's go, let's go do something. Well, you know what they should do. Don't want it. So, the line between victimization is really simple. You get the results you want, or you get stuck. Would you, like, get, would you guys like to get the results you want, or get stuck? So, so. Would you like to be successful or unsuccessful? Successful. Would you like to be phenomenal or tired? Phenomenal. Well, well, full. Oh. <laughs> Ate a lot of vegetables before I got here. Well, nice. Well, mealy mouth. You want to see something funny, watch those three and just Vegetables just, <laughs> that is kind of weird. <laughs> John Piper screaming across the store, check out these cucumbers, Brendan! <laughs> Woo! You want one? Yeah! <laughs> Walking past the hotel, just bags of... <laughs> I told you, the stories can go all over the place here. I'll keep focused, I promise. All right, guys, there's a line between getting the results you want or getting stuck. We're gonna talk about that right now. And guys, yes, yeah, so we're Fred Meyer, you got these amazing big numbers. Don't get the waxy ones, get the organic ones. All right, here we go. I'm gonna use my pointer here. Whenever you fall below the line, you're gonna get stuck, you will not get what you want. I ask you again, would you like to get what you want or not get what you want? I have to beat this dead horse to a bloody pulp because I have to make sure people understand this. When this happens, you do not get what you want. Would you feel it would be very valuable to be able to identify when, not if, when you're behaving in a way that's going to take you away from what you want so you can change your behavior and get what you want? Would you believe that's valuable? Yes. yes. Well, then here we go. All right. First thing is, you are falling below the line when you start this nonsense of the ignore or denial. I have had people over 500 pounds sitting in front of me. 
telling me they're the smartest fat people that, in the world. <laughs> I really, I've read every book. I know exactly how to lose weight. <laughs> I just want to have like a one day pass to check out your pool. <laughs> okay, that's denial. I can't help that person yet. Okay? Or ignoring. Have you ever seen a situation? You know it's going to be detrimental. You know it's not going to be helpful. You know it's going to affect you, the people around you, your community, your environment, your family, everything. However, let's just ignore it. Maybe it'll go away on its own. Like a slice of cheesecake sitting in front of you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. Used to be a pastry chef, so you're talking my top right here. You know, I do love you guys. I have a pallet right now. We got some. We'll get it. So here goes the story. I'm going on my tangent. Got these great bananas with some organic peanut butter. That was really good. I still kind of taste it a little bit. I got this little. Who would have thought? Check out this peanut butter bread. You grind it, throw it yourself. Get a tub of it, John. All right. It's not my responsibility. You see this at home, you see this at work, you see this at the gym, you see it within yourself. Okay? I'm not getting paid to do that. Give an example. Okay. Let's say you're walking up to this gym okay, and you see that some hooligans has broken a bunch of beer bottles right there in front of the gym. Now I'm telling you this, this is a story of something that actually happened over in Bend, Oregon. There was a whole bunch of glass in front of the door and I observed boot campers walking around the glass, walking over the glass and coming into class. Then I watched one boot camper, her name was Tina Fricky. She walked up to the glass and immediately walked around, came to me and goes, could you give me a broom and dustpan, please? There's a bunch of glass out there, someone can get hurt. And I go, yes! <laughs> Woo! People always kind of try, I'll drive people nuts because They'll see me walk. There's something about the area that we're in. It creates some kind of, where all the garbage every morning in that parking lot, just every McDonald's wrapper thrown out of a car shows up right there in that parking lot. And so people wondering why, you know, I'm walking around the parking lot picking up stuff. Well, it's not my responsibility, is it? Actually, the owners of that parking lot, they should really go worry about this. I just think, you know, it's an absolute mess out there. Terrible, disgusting. Not really my responsibility. I pay rent for that facility. I'm going to call, I'm going to complain, or I could just take two minutes out of my life and pick up the dark garbage. Okay? Have you ever seen a situation that you knew wasn't going to get done, you knew needed to get done, and you knew when it didn't get done, it was going to affect you, it was going to affect your work, it was going to affect your family, it was going to affect your community. However, you did nothing because it's not your responsibility. Well, that's easy enough. However, what's the real issue? It affected you, it affected your community, it affected everything. And the job didn't get done and that affected you. Okay? Business owners, let's say you have a huge account okay? and everyone's getting their work done. Okay? And you saw and you had two employees and one phenomenal. She's getting all of her work done. It's amazing. I mean, and more. Just brilliant. But what if she saw over here, this person's partying up, they're I don't know, smoking a doobie in the bathroom, just hanging out. They're not going to get their work done, and if it doesn't get done, you lose a million dollar account and the company shuts down. What would you hope that person does? Now, first of all, as the owner, what's really the only thing truly you want? You really just wanted to get done. Because if it doesn't get done, this happens and the company shuts down. Man, does it matter that when it doesn't get done, it wasn't this person's fault? She did her work phenomenally. It was this person's fault. They're the slacker. What's the real issue? So you kind of see how it gets skewed a little bit. It's not my responsibility. Now that's pretty tough to think that way though, isn't it? Yeah. Why do I always, why do I, 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 why do I always have to be the one to step up? Why do I always have to be the one? And why do they never? And you start thinking that way. Or however, we could think of the way that, you know what, this is important. This needs to get done. What else, what can I do to rise above this circumstance and make sure this gets done? That's a tough one. But if you're doing this, the real issue is it's not going to get done and it's going to affect you and everybody. The confusion, tell me what to do. All right? Guys, I have a test for you. Are you ready? Let's say hypothetically every single one of you want to lose 50 pounds in the next four months. Right? Now, guess what? If you all truly needed to lose 50 pounds in the next four months, 
it is physiologically possible for you to do so. Would you agree? Yes. yes. I say that actually from a physiological standpoint. I, I'm telling you right now, it is possible. Okay. Now, I want you to think about the most important thing in your life. It could be a person, it could be your kids, it could be your husband. Some people, I don't really put that out there too much, some people say, yeah, get rid of them. <laughs> but whatever's most, it could be your dog, could be your life, for all I know. Think about the most important thing in your life. Okay, are you ready? I'm gonna take that most important thing in your life, I'm gonna hang it over a cliff, and it is guaranteed 100% that that will drop off that cliff and die if you don't lose 50 pounds in four months and I'm not going to show you how. Could every single one of you pull it off? Absolutely. You bet you could. Something very important is online. You'll find a way. You know why? Because I know how brilliant and phenomenal you people are. Right? So what I see though is I see this. They desperately want it. They want to get it done. They want to achieve what they want to achieve. But because they're confused about a situation or they don't feel they were told exactly what to do, do you realize that what we've created here in America, and marketers know it, we've created a situation to where if you're not held by the hand and led through every step, and even then, if you get confused even a little bit, we've been taught to shut down and state that is the reason why we didn't achieve our goal. Well. She was supposed to do this, and she didn't do this, and I, I'm really confused, and you know, if she just would have done a better job, then I wouldn't have been confused, I would have got this done, and that's why I quit. But what's the real issue? It didn't get done, and you desperately wanted it. Would you agree? Yes. But guess what you all just proved to me? You're all absolutely phenomenal, and you truly are confused. We've just been taught to get confused and just get frustrated, Quit. As opposed to saying, you know what, in spite of that, dang it, I'm going to find a way to get this done. I know how to do this. I'm extremely smart. I'm pretty phenomenal. I can find a way. By the way, that's kind of what boot camp's all about. I know the word boot camp sounds like we're going to scream with a big smoky on and chevrons. It's really about this. It's really about overcoming these things that stop us over and over and again. Are you watching the fights tomorrow? You got, you got the cool shirt. I wasn't sure. I'm trying to find somewhere to watch the fights. I'm all over the boards. I'm just gonna gonna go everywhere. We need somewhere to watch. We'll find it. We need somewhere to watch it. We weren't quite sure there were houses around this area for a while. Well, I mean, because right in here, there's a bunch of bushes and there's a lot of stores where the houses. And then we're oh. And then I saw some on the hill, so I'm just kind of hiding. Trailers on the corner. They're hiding. Right? <laughs> you guys know what I mean. I'm just kind of going, there's a lot of shops, so where do they hide them? <laughs> <laughs> Wait and see. Have you ever had a situation to where you knew it was going to be detrimental for you, for everyone else? However, let's just sit back, wait and see if it fixes itself. Now, just so you know, every single one of us, myself included, can all raise our hands right now. Okay, guys, this is not meant for me to do a pointy finger thing. This is meant for me to say, I do this every day. However, what I've created is I've created a situation where I can now recognize when I'm doing it so I can change my path, so I can actually go on a more positive path and get what I want. However, this kind of stuff, you're doing it every day. So it's not meant to stop you from doing it. It's meant to recognize it and change it. See what I mean? My favorites. Why? Because this one I'm going to talk about my kids a little bit. Cover your back. I love coming home. I have three daughters. One is nine, one is six, and one is ten months old. The ten-month-old is not much of a problem. She just does a squeaky little grin now. That's all she does. It's great. <laughs> Wonderful. Nice. When she can start walking and crawling, then trouble. But right now, she's pretty stationary. <laughs> She cries, she pokes, she eats it. It's, it's simple. Stays where you left. It's awesome. No, no bad talk. No, and none of what I'm about to tell you. Coming home, and all of a sudden, my nine year old, I don't, I have no idea what's happened. However, she's coming out and immediately telling me a very compelling story about whatever happened is not her fault. And it's good, whatever happened. 
All I know is it's not her fault. <laughs> and finally, after a while, because we never get to the bottom of what's really going on, all I know is it's not her fault and all the reasons why. Just what a great lawyer she's going to be. The whole case is laid out for me. <laughs> all right, excellent. Is that your case? Okay, stop. And then I go back to my wife and I kind of go, you got to fill me in on what happened. <laughs> Because I got a weird feeling she's completely guilty. <laughs> what a classic technique, okay? Number one, you saw a situation, you did nothing to make it better. All you really did was you took and spent your precious energy to create a very compelling story, and it may make perfect sense to you. So when things completely blow up, it's not your fault. But what's the real issue? You didn't get done. You could have contributed to things not blowing up and things actually getting done and all of us moving forward, but all you did was spend your energy covering your back. Has anybody ever been guilty of that? Everybody raise your hands, please. Heck yeah! There's a classic human nature. There's America for you. There's our government right there. I know we have a trillion dollar deficit, but it's not our fault. It's their fault. If they would have just done this. We know what the issue is. Pointing blame. Oh, I love pointing blame. They're so perfect together. Pointing blame, and again, you know, God got it. I know this, and I know this, and you know, if Rich would have just done what he was supposed to do, you know, this wouldn't have been an issue. I tell you what, because he could have done this, he could have done this, and he really could have done this, and that would have stopped this. <laughs> Pointing blame, and you spend your precious energy doing this stuff. Okay? But the real issue comes down to immediately when you go this direction, and you will on a daily basis, our job today is to get you to recognize this, you will not get what you want. Let's beat that dead horse to a bloody pole. So when you act this way, you won't get what you want. Do you want to get what you want or not? Yes. You will not be successful when you do this stuff. you want to be successful or unsuccessful? Successful. <gasps> Here we go. Here's the key to success. Here's the tough part. The very first thing you have to do, if you're not getting what you want, is you've got to see the situation for what it is. Now, some of you may be Dr. Phil fans, some of you may be not. Some may think he's an absolute quack. It's okay. But he does say something I think is rather brilliant. Okay? He says, you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. That 500 pound man, they just want to kind of use the pool and see how it feels. He doesn't see it yet. When I train clients, a lot of them kind of wonder why the very first thing I'm looking into is I ask questions, we identify, and we talk for about a good hour first. Because the very first thing we have to do is, why haven't we achieved our goals in the past? What do we have to do to see the situation for what it is? Because we really can't move forward. I can't give you a brilliant program that's guaranteed to work until you're mentally ready to make it work. You've got to see the situation for what it is. Does that make sense? That's extremely tough. That takes a lot of humility to actually see the situation for what it is. Once you truly see the situation for what it is, now we can take 100% ownership of it. And when I say 100% ownership, do I mean I take full responsibility for the failure? Okay. Guess what? Here we go. I know how phenomenal, how capable you guys are. True ownership means you are capable of getting the job done, and guess what? Got done. That's, that's ownership. It got done. Why? Because you can do it. Because you're 100% capable. Not, well, it didn't get done, but blah, 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 blah. I take 100 because I tell you what, until we get there, creating a program or a phenomenal boot camp or anything, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Solving it, we're not ready for solving it because we're not ready to take 100% ownership to do it. Okay? Doing this before I do this is like I've had a magic pen that's guaranteed that when you use it, all your troubles will go away and you'll be the most amazing person in the world. However, I give it to you and you just put it down and don't write with it because you're not ready. It's not time. Only when you go here, here, then here's your program, now we can do it. That's hard, that's easy. Why do people do this a lot? It's easy, it's easy. why wouldn't we? Guys, by the way, it's okay that we do things that are easier. 
It's who we are as organisms on this earth. Do you guys realize that? Organisms on the earth take the easy path. So guys, it's not something to blame it. Other people say, well, I don't do this because I'm lazy. I go, congratulations, that makes you the same as an amoeba. You're an organism on the earth. Of course we take the path of least resistance. If Rich needs to write something down, and there's a pen here, and there's a pen on top of a mountain over there. <laughs> Thank you. Does that make him lazy? Yes. No. Sure! <laughs> Don't you know it'd be much more beneficial if you got up and you walked and Sure, but now come on, the pen's right there. Guys, it's okay. I need you to kind of take it easy on yourselves. So when people say they're lazy, I'm going, oh yeah, sure. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> if you put if you give the cat a choice to truly live outside or come into a warm house and be fed, and what, what would they choose every time? You guys ever seen a wild cat in a house cat? I love house cats. They crack me up. You ever, you ever put a house cat all declawed outside? They just stand in front of that door. <laughs> it's who we are. It's what, what we do. Right? Here we go. Guys, I do not have your victimization survey, but um, as I read these off, I want you to write down the answers. Are you ready? These will be confidential. What you have in front of you, you do not have to turn in. So you can truly be 100% honest on this survey. Are you ready? Here we go. Now, when I first took this survey years ago, really ticked me off. You'll see why. Number one, were you ever surprised by negative feedback from someone else when you thought all along you were doing the very best to solve a problem, yes or no? Yes. Number two, have you ever spent even a little time blaming others and pointing fingers when things did not go the way you wanted them, yes or no? Number three, did you ever suspect something would become a problem for someone or for your organization, but you did nothing about it? Number four, I've never spent time covering your tail just in case something went wrong. <laughs> Number five, I've never said it's not my job and expected someone else to solve a problem. Number six, did you ever feel totally powerless with no control over your circumstances or situation? Yes or no? Number seven. Have you ever found yourself waiting to see if a situation would miraculously solve itself? Number eight, have you ever said, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it? Have you ever felt that you would do things differently if it was your own company? You know when I used to do this? Right there? When I was an employee of a company. Yeah. Now that I'm the owner, I look back, I'm going, I was such a jackass. <laughs> What was I thinking? You know, if I was the one doing all this and putting all the, I would do it so differently. Nope. You ever heard that walk a mile in your shoes? In someone else's shoes? Anybody ever say that you'll never do things the way your parents did? I promise myself I will never talk to my kids like my father did. And my father, hey, bro, 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 bro. And now I have three kids and I, guys, I have six brothers. We have constant calls saying, yeah, acted like dad again. <laughs> sure, yeah. We're just disgusted. Just our greeting is this. We do this. Because that was the size of my dad's nose. And we start seeing how close we're all getting. <laughs> and my brother who's now turned 60, he's starting to fill that up. Walk a mile in those shoes. It's amazing. He starts saying some of the same things. Remember some of what I'm talking about. Do you ever tell stories of how someone took advantage of you, a boss, a friend, a contractor, a salesperson? Give yourself one point for each yes answer, please. Here is your grading scale. Zero. You're not being very honest with yourself. No one's going to see your results. Do it again. <laughs> one point. You know you're capable of falling below the line, but you probably do some more often than you're willing to admit. I say there also. Please go back and do it again. Two, four, two to four points. Take some satisfaction. You're only human. Five to seven points. You realize you can easily fall below the line. And eight to ten points. You are very honest. Pretty normal. You just need to learn to move above the line. That's really it. It's not a blame thing. It's not a guilt thing. We just need to learn to recognize it and get above the line. Would you agree? Yes. 
said anyone because they're fans of these people. I'd like to say I apologize, but it just is what it is, you know. We don't have to agree on all everything. It's okay. I still like you as a human being. Um, you guys don't know who Trell Owens is? Can we all agree that Trell Owens is a phenomenal player? However, have you ever seen a team he's been on that has completely imploded? You know, and maybe temporarily had a good game here or there? but never really excelled, even though he's a phenomenal player. And by the way, he got his. Because we can agree he puts points on the board. And you ever seen, by the way, I see it quite a bit, so I'll point it out. I can't tell you how many times I've watched his team lose, and all he can talk about is what he did. But what's the point? His, his team lost. I watched his team was down by three touchdowns. He just got a touchdown. He gets in the camera and is just going, yeah! Woo! Good <laughs> dude, it's like the end of the game. Your team lost. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> if you just would have thrown me the ball more, we might have won. So, guys, I do believe, yes, individual responsibility. Absolutely take care of your individual responsibility. But that's where most people, they, they miss it. The important thing about a team is not if, but when. Someone drops the ball. You have a bunch of people there to grab it. You have a bunch of people there to pick it up. By the way, even though it's not your job, it's not your responsibility. That's the power of a team, is understanding it's going to happen. Somebody somewhere, something is going to drop the ball, but the real issue is you want yourself and the group to get what they want, don't you? Yes. That's the power of team accountability. Joint accountability is right there. Okay? So it starts off with individual responsibility. But the real strength comes from team accountability. Which, by the way, nothing more aggravating than others holding you accountable to exactly what you said you wanted. Would you agree? <laughs> I see this over and over again. If you guys join me tomorrow at 7 in the morning, I'll say this. I'll say, you, if, if you're helping somebody with their push-ups and they're not absolutely ticked off, not liking you, giving you the biggest stink face in the world, you're not being a good push-up buddy. <laughs> people that truly care about you. Now, how's this for a weird philosophy? If people truly care about you, because people tell you with their, with their words, you know, how much they care about you. I believe if people truly care about you, they want the best for you. Would you agree? Yes. And if they want the best for you, shouldn't they ask the best of you at all times? And vice versa. Now, nothing worse than you know, by the way, the only reason we get upset is we know we're dinking around. Come on, we know. Done it myself, just dang it. I've done it to Victor, Victor's done it to me. And just, but the, and there's been times, guys, Victor and I, we've gotten straight to blows sometimes. And it just got to the fact that, you know, just one of us need to go, all right, I suck, let's, ah! Guys, I believe that's a huge issue we have right now, and that's what we're doing with the boot camp. We want to create an environment to where people want the best for you, so they'll ask the best of you at all times, because they truly care about you. I want to change our philosophy about truly caring about someone. Caring about someone and saying, I understand you're upset, and I understand you snapped at me a little bit, so you just, whenever you feel better, drown your sorrows in a flat of cupcakes, <laughs> then we can, you know, nope. But by the way, that's very hard, just so you know. So the question is this, and I want you to truly write something down, and this is hard. What are you going to start doing today to start moving above the line consistently? What are you going to start doing today? One simple thing. What's one simple thing? Actually, I gave you all an assignment you could do today that will help you start moving above the line today. What's that? Pardon? Well, there's one. Write that little sentence down and hang it up somewhere. There's one thing. 
Look at that. And amazing, you have reminders to move above the line. Guys, let's go over a couple things. Because I am actually a huge fan of these. Are you ready? Yes. I'm going to post these on the group site. So anybody that couldn't make it here, I will put the film on the MySpace, give you guys the link, and I'm going to put these actually on your website. You can share them. Okay? Now, Again, remember, this is not so you can tell them, you know, you really have an issue with this. I believe you can really be helped by this. That's a classic. You ever seen the wife find a great book about how to be a better husband and not so bad as a husband, so they buy it for their husband? You should read this. It never goes over well. I'll post it so others can read it. What I'm saying is let's focus on ourselves and helping ourselves to be better people. And through that influence, we can help others. <coughs> All right. So, how do we recognize a word below the line? Do you feel captive by your circumstances? Hmm. Do you feel any lack of control over your present circumstances? You don't listen when others tell you directly or indirectly that they think you could have done more to achieve better results. That's very hard, by the way, not to get defensive when someone really honestly tells you, you know, you kind of suck. <laughs> I hate it. And you know why I hate it? Because I did suck and I have to admit it. Ah! Really hate that. You find yourself blaming others and pointing fingers. Your discussions of problems focus on what you cannot do rather than what you can do. You fail to confront the toughest issues you face. You find yourself being sought out by others. Okay, guys, get ready for this. This is a tough one. You find yourself being sought out by others so they can tell you what someone else did to them this time. Are you that person others come to to complain to? Guess what? That means you accept they're complaining and they're whining and sniffling. And you're not asking them to rise above their circumstances, which means you are choosing not to rise above your circumstances. Guess how many people complain to me? Not very often. And some people tell themselves a very compelling story. The match doesn't listen. He won't even. Rrr, rrr. Absolutely, I'll listen. No problem. Yep. But not when you're just going to come there and tell me how horrible things are in life and, you know, I wish gas prices and that darn Obama and just, oh, for goodness sakes. Yeah, those people don't talk to me too much. <laughs> when someone doesn't know me very well and attempts to complain about gas prices, what's the first thing I say? I absolutely agree. What are you going to do? Because I need some help on those gas prices too. What are you going to do? Well, what can I do? I don't control the gas prices. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. So what are we complaining about? So what are you going to do about gas prices? Exactly. I'll ride my bike. I'll park my car. But guys, what control do you have about that? Okay. So let's figure out something. Either we do something to make our situation better and overcome that circumstance, well, let's just shut the heck up. Well, let's quit sniveling. We've got better things to do. Now, by the way, that's very tough because we get caught to a big misery section. <laughs> Did you see? I think it's gone. It went up five cents from when I got here. Like, <laughs> you really find yourself in a defensive posture. I'm not the one to be a defensive. You're the one to be a defense bridge. Why is all the other person? You spend a lot of time talking about things you cannot change. Your boss, shareholders, the economy's performance, government regulations. You cite your confusion as a reason for not taking action. You avoid the people, the meetings, and the situations that require you to report your responsibilities. Do you know what cracks me up? Every time in boot camp is how many people get sick kids, sick themselves, something happens, their alarm didn't go off on weigh-in day. I've done this a long time. Guys, whatever trick you're about to pull, I've seen it and I'm just gonna smile and just, I know you're lying, it's okay, I know you're lying. I love you. I know we've all supposed to have grown up and I know we haven't, I've done it. There have been times I'm supposed to meet with my trainer and I'm thinking of the most compelling story I possibly can. And I may have to use my kids or something. I mean, just anything. <laughs> well, my kids, yeah. <coughs> 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 
So this note just makes me laugh. I'll just smile. I understand. That's awful. You know when people do the old, has anybody used the alarm thing? Slept through my alarm. I always ask this question. What if you were guaranteed to have a million dollars if you didn't sleep through your alarm? Would you have slept through your alarm? Well, no. Okay. <laughs> So it wasn't really important enough for you to get you get up. You know why I don't sleep through my alarm? Because because my face is on the logo and I kind of have to show. Dang it! I really don't like that. Even though I got very close once, I will say that I had four setups: I had an alarm, an alarm, cell phone, okay, and then the final one was a dog that had to pee 4:30 every morning. It got down to the dog with a little squeaky toy. Squeak! Thank you! I didn't miss it. So everyone get a dog that has to pee at 4.30 every morning. They're wonderful. Someone ought to tell him. Okay, you find yourself saying it's not my job. There's nothing I can do about it. All we can do is wait and see. Well, just tell me what you want me to do. If it were me, I'd do it differently. You frequently waste time. And energy, boss or colleague bashing, you spend valuable time crafting a compelling story, detailing why you were not at fault, you repeatedly tell the same old story, how someone took advantage of you, and you view the world with a pessimistic attitude. Are some of you realizing when you fall below the line? As we all do. Is this a blame thing? Is this to make you feel bad about yourselves? No. Nope. Very normal. We just have to learn to recognize it, get above the line. Would you agree? Yes. yes. All right. These are 20 tried and true excuses. I'm going to give you guys one assignment about this. I want you to have fun with it. I want you to give a new one, besides what you see on there, that you've heard in boot camp already, <laughs> that you may have given. Because guys, and it's not a blame thing, it's not a pointy finger thing, just have fun with it. Because it gets kind of fun after a while. Well, you won't believe what happened. That's the way we've always done it. It's not my job. I didn't know you needed it right away. It wasn't my fault that it was late. That's not my department. No one told me what to do. I'm still waiting for approval. Someone should have told me not to do that. Don't blame me, it was the boss's idea. I didn't know, I forgot. If you had told me it was that important, I would have done it. I'm too busy to do it. Someone told me to do the wrong thing. I thought I told you. Why didn't you ask me? No one invited me to the meeting, I didn't get the memo. My people dropped the ball. No one followed up with me, it can't be that important. I told someone else to take care of it. Whew, you go on forever. I've told more than that. Jeez. So please enjoy that. But guys, share some. It's kind of fun. I'll share some. I'll tell you what I'm thinking of right now. So guys, when are taxes due? How many people here are certified accountants? Yeah, isn't it weird that y'all know that? Can we all agree we know when taxes are due? <coughs> are you ready to hear actual things people have told the IRS on why I didn't make these up? Which, by the way, none of those things you just read were made up. They were spoken by actual people. These ones were not spoken to me personally. The other ones were spoken to me personally. And yes, I do have some list. This was actually to the IRS. Here we go. I didn't know today was the deadline. It's too complicated. Would you agree? I agree it's too complicated. How long have you had to find a way to get these things done? I didn't realize it was April. Is it April? I lost the paperwork. I had no time to read the forms or instructions. I didn't do my taxes because I'm afraid of owing money. Some of you may have said these things. I don't know. I hate numbers. I can't balance my checkbook. What makes anyone think I can correctly file a tax return? <laughs> Guys, what's the real issue about all these things? We're well, the two inevitable things that have to get done. That's it. And they don't go away when you ignore them or remake these reasons. They just pile up in a little corner. Abolish the IRS. <sighs> I agree. <laughs> but let's plan on something like that. It's not just, I'll do that in the editing. That's better than software. Cut that right out. I'm afraid of going to a tax professional would be worse than going to the dentist. 
I don't want to know how much I made because I don't know where I spent it. These were actually sent by people. My husband and my tax return have been misplaced. Can you please send me my replacements? <coughs> this is my personal favorite. This was actually said to the IRS, and it made sense to the person. I was getting the tax forms out of a box, and I was bitten by a black widow spider. I have been too sick since then to complete the returns. Now, I'm not accusing your office of sending a spider with the forms, but let's face it, fellas, I didn't put it there. And I need some extra time to do my taxes. <laughs> yep. Wow. And that person would have had the nerve to be offended if the IRS said, no, <gasps> don't you understand? My hardships, the nerve. I find the more offended someone gets, the more they know they're just thinking around. I was going, boy, get more fired up. I think you know you screwed up more. Guys, here's our new definition of accountability. A personal choice to rise above one's circumstances and demonstrate the ownership necessary for achieving desired results. To see it, own it, solve it, and do it. That's our new definition. That definition is very difficult. I'm asking you to do something that's going to challenge you. I'm asking you not to leave your garden untended and let it just go to ruin, because that just happens. I'm asking you to daily find when you're falling below the line, and you will, as will I, as will everyone, and change your course. Truly take ownership of your success. Now, what did you guys expect I was going to tell you about tonight? Some magic exercise, magic pill, maybe? Guys, 98% of this journey, you may have already heard this. It's all right here. It's here. Most people don't quit because they're confused about the 2%, the process of the journey. But you already proved to me that if I put the most important thing on the line, you could find a way to do it. And that's proof positive that you're phenomenal. You have every reason and every way, which by the way, the environment's not gonna ask this of you. It has to be you. Which, by the way, also, that's what this group is all about. Is so you rise above your circumstances, you rise above your circumstances, and you inspire others to join you. Okay? And you change your environment starting with you. Can y'all promise me you'll do that? Yes. All right, I'm gonna post this stuff up, I'll post the video up. Fun, 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 fun. Yeah. Thanks for being here, guys, I appreciate it. Thanks.